Michael Scott, Scotty Man Photo. I'm here in the Red River Gorge in eastern Kentucky. I'm actually heading to Princess Arch, hopefully to capture an award-winning image, but I'll settle for a good morning and maybe a decent image. The Red River Gorge is an amazing place. It's truly one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. I think it's, it's hard to put in words the, the majestic lore this place has, but um, it always pulls me in. And I think there's many, there's just countless images here that I want to want to return to capture. You know, really and truly, it doesn't even matter if I capture an image at all. Just being in the gorge is, is a treat, especially sunrise. There's just something that's truly amazing about a sunrise in the Red River Gorge. Well, if you're ever in the area where you have the opportunity to visit the gorge, I would highly recommend stopping by for a visit. Certainly, if you're a backpacker, hiker, outdoor enthusiast, you're not going to be uh, you're not going to be disappointed visiting the Red River Gorge. Well, I'm going to break out the wide-angle lens. I'm going to get in close to this arch, and I'm going to try to capture an image that tells a story, the story of how I feel about this arch, and what I'm seeing, and hopefully capture that brief moment in the gorge that can do justice to the feeling of actually being here and seeing what I'm seeing. Anyway, that's what I hope to do. We'll see. You let me know if I actually do it or not. That's well, a beautiful morning, I'll say that for sure. Um, There's much better sky than I thought it was going to be. And that light um, might cast a nice color onto the rocks. Of the arch here and uh, yeah we'll see I don't, I'm not sure we have to wait uh, for the Sun to come up a little bit more I've got really no wind so that's good but I do need a bit more light to illuminate the the arch so uh, anyway from my last video I talked about and I'll post a link to that here but I talked about coming back here uh, on my last trip and I didn't know if I was going to come back in the evening or morning, and anyway, I ended up staying down to a Cherokee Arch, and uh, never did come back, so I thought I'd come back this time and, and see what I could do with Princess Arch, so I need to get set up. We'll see. We'll see. I think one of the most attractive aspects to sunrise photography is being able to have the entire area to yourself. And, be one-on-one -on -one with nature, and not having distractions and other things kind of pulling your attention away. But more importantly, it allows you to kind of escape the, the everyday routine of life and just focus on, on the moment and what you're doing. Just you and your gear and the composition. You know, one thing I always try to be mindful of is, uh, well, try to be mindful of many things, but one thing in particular, when I'm changing lenses, and um, just be careful. And it's not that you want to baby your gear, although there's nothing wrong with that, but uh, you want to be mindful of your, your lenses. And you know, you can get a, a speck of dust on this rear element of this lens and totally ruin your shoot. So it's not just about babying your equipment, it's about getting the, uh, getting the image. Well, I've got my composition set up. A couple things to look out for. Um, one is things you bring down, like your backpack, your coffee cup, your coat. Uh, don't leave those things in your image. I've, I've done that before only to find out later. And uh, yeah, you can Photoshop them out, but why do that if you don't have to? So I'm shooting pretty wide on this, about 20, 21 millimeters. Might get in a little closer and, and shoot even wider. Uh, but something to, to think about on these wide angles is distortion and you, you certainly want to look at the image. It, it, if you've got your camera kind of pointed straight on, you don't have to worry about distortion so much. So something to think about here is kind of widening, maybe going up to 15 mils or maybe even all the way up to 14 and give yourself some room to crop in and you can straighten the, as, the, um, uh, the actual image. So when you get any distortion, when you're trying to correct for distortion, 
you can actually crop out those images because you're going to lose some of the image when you try to correct it. Uh, the distortion, the lens distortion as you kind of tilt and shift the image. So best to give yourself some room to, to kind of straighten up. I, I don't like my branches and leaves are just really kind of curving in. You can clearly see the distortion. I don't like that so I'll, I'll often shoot wider than I need to just to make sure that I, that I get everything that I need so that when I get back into post I don't have to uh, I don't have to wish I shot wider than I did. So just something to keep in mind. Always best to look for snakes before you plant your feet. Most bites, most snake bites occur in the hand, hands and feet. Don't want to take any chances. I think I like this composition here. I'm working on better. Those branches right there, right there, kind of coming into my frame, and I don't like that. 18 mil, it's pretty sharp. Those branches were coming in there. I kind of removed them, just kind of cropped in and got away from them. Not sure if I like the slope there. So I might make that a 16 by 9. We'll see. So you got my my GoPro right there. I'm gonna reshoot that. I had to do that for you. For my audience. Yeah. So I could make that a 16 by 9. But then again, I shot really wide so that I could uh, remove any lens distortion in post. So I don't have anything kind of obviously. Uh, skewed really really bad and so so I'm trying to avoid trying to line up elements in the image you know I, I really think about the center the eye of the arch and where I want that I don't really want that center I want that on a third line an upper third line and I kind of want the the viewer to to view out towards the the edge of the arch and uh, and eliminate some distracting elements that are coming into the frame. This is actually a chaotic scene and just trying to make the most of it. I got a few images on this uh, and these arches are tricky to shoot. You have to contend with with focus and you also have to contend with exposure. So you know often when you're shooting a high dynamic range scene and this is early in the morning this is uh, this is probably maybe four or five stops at best uh, but there's a lot of tree coverage, so there might be a couple of areas in the image where uh, there might be a few blown out leaves, but shooting wide really minimizes the, um, uh, the viewer's ability to even see that. So when this is, even this printed a, on a large, maybe a 30 inch image on the wall, it's doubtful that anyone would see that. However, um, you know, if, when it's calm like this, there's no wind, it's still, I think you can really take advantage of exposure bracketing. And, uh, and really get that image dialed in to the way you want it. So, uh, so you don't lose any detail. And I, I certainly like that. So I love shooting these arches though. I, I love the, uh, the journey uh, that's involved with this. I like, I like uh, I just like the cool mountain feel that, that this scene has and provides. And I like the sounds of nature. I, there's just nothing about this I don't like. I'm just tr really excited to be here. And uh, every opportunity I get to come to the Red River Gorge, uh, I'm here. So, man, I just love it. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, I did shoot one more exposure. I, I don't know. I think I might like it. Kind of included these, tr uh, these leaves right here in the foreground. And then just kind of uh, shot kind of an, an upward angle. And I'm just kind of on the hill there. This kind of shot up and there'll be some distortion in that but I think it might uh, might lend itself to the image it might uh, might just look kind of natural with everything just kind of going up so I really don't plan on doing much uh, distortion correction on that I shot it wide 
about 16 millimeter. But uh, yeah, a couple of boulders here in the foreground and these leaves right here just kind of leading up through using the trees as kind of leading lines as they pass through the center of the image. At least that's what I'm hoping for. So we'll see. All right, well, I guess I'm gonna just kind of kick back and relax. Probably gonna climb on top of the arch and, uh, and uh, have some coffee and uh, relax a little bit. So uh, I'll, uh, I'll end this with leaving you with some views from the top of the arch in the uh, Daniel Boone National Forest in the Red River Gorge in Eastern Kentucky. All right. Well, if you like the video, make sure you hit that like button and consider subscribing. And uh, drop me a comment. Let me know what you thought. And as always, if I don't see you down the road, maybe I'll see you on the trail. Well, overall, I was pretty happy with this image. I think it could be better, though. I think a slight shift in perspective and maybe getting in a little closer might make a world of difference. I might try to recapture this one. I was pretty happy with this image. I, I really liked the overall composition. Um, and I really liked the foreground. It had more of a foreground interest with the uh, kind of the boulders at the base. So I really like this. And I think it really represents the, the Red River Gorge overall better than, better than the other image. But let me know your thoughts. I won't forget you.